Okay, so what's liquidation of a limited company? Right, there are a number of ways that you can liquidate a limited company in the UK today and many, many, many different reasons. Today, I am going to walk you through absolutely everything there is to know about liquidating a company in the UK today, in 2024. Chris Worden, director first. Okay, liquidation is the formal process of closing down a limited company in the UK today. The company can be insolvent or solvent. So let me explain what that means. A solvent company is a company that can pay off all its debts and still have some money left over. Or in fact, it can just pay off all its debts. That means you're solvent. An insolvent company is the opposite. And there are three tests to find out whether a company is solvent or not. They're called the corporate insolvency test. The first test is something called the cash flow test. And it's very simple. Can your limited company pay off your debts as and when they fall due? So for instance, if you are in a time to pay arrangement with HMRC, that is a clear indicator that the business has become insolvent. The second insolvency test is the balance sheet test. And what this means is, the question that's asked is, are the liabilities of the business worth more than the assets? And if they are, you are insolvent on a balance sheet basis. The way that you find that out is you've got to get all, all your liabilities. You know, find out exactly who you owe money to and you compare them to your asset register. The third and final test is the legal action test. And that essentially means that if your limited company has had a CCJ issued against your company at court, or it has a stat demand that's been served, or it has a winding up petition that's been served, your business is insolvent. Okay, solvent is you can pay all your debts. Insolvent is you can't pay all your debts. So let's talk about liquidation, what it actually means. It, it means the ending of a company's operation. It's brought to an end by an insolvency practitioner. There is a process of liquidation that we're going to talk about. And eventually the company at company's house becomes dissolved. There are three main types of liquidation in the UK. The first one is called a creditor's voluntary liquidation or liquidation for short. And that is where a company has become insolvent, cannot afford to pay debts or when they fall due, liability isn't more than their assets or there's legal action pending. And the company directors go out there and appoint a licensed insolvency practitioner. And they're also called liquidators, just to confuse you. Insolvency practitioner, IP and liquidator are all the same thing. And their role is to take control of the company and formally close that company down. If there is any assets, their job is to sell those assets to realise funds for creditors. A lot of the times there's no assets, there's nothing left. The director may have sold the assets previous to appointing the liquidator. Once the liquidator has collected any money in, if there is any money, the liquidator's role is to distribute that money to creditors in order of importance. So first person to get paid is charge holders, then there's preferential creditors like HMRC, unsecured creditors, and finally, directors and shareholders. A lot of the time when it gets to unsecured creditors and directors and shareholders, certainly on smaller liquidations, they don't get anything back. Um, and that's what a CVL is, company, uh, the <laughs> creditors voluntary liquidation, okay? You will expect to pay four to 5,000 pounds for a small company. Uh, with most insolvency practitioners, that price could go up. If it goes lower, be careful about that. I've done loads of videos, watch them. 
The next thing is a member's voluntary liquidation, and it is the opposite end of the scale from a voluntary creditor's voluntary liquidation. A member's voluntary liquidation, or MVL for short, is a solvent liquidation. And it's used for solvent companies where there are sufficient assets and cash to pay off all creditors in full, okay? So you might have 200 grand in the account, you owe 100 grand out, you pay out the 100 grand, you've left with 100,000 pound. Now the shareholders pass a resolution to liquidate the solvent company, okay? Often it's because the business has just served its purpose. You know, the directors are retiring, moving on to pastures new. You know, you appoint a liquidator and a liquidator's job is to distribute the remaining funds to the shareholders. And a member's voluntary liquidation, you're probably going to be paying about £2,500, certainly starting from, there are some other costs involved there. And the, the, the things like advertising fees, um, bonds, we can go through that if you, if you want to chat about them. But an MVL, right, the reason why people will use an MVL is it's the most tax-efficient way of drawing money out of the company for shareholders. Certainly, if you've sort of got more than 30, 30 or £40,000 in the bank once you've paid everybody off. It used to be called entrepreneur's relief where you withdraw that money at 10% and now I think it's called uh, business asset disposal. So that is an MVL, it is a solvent liquidation. The third type of liquidation is something that we call a compulsory liquidation and where possible avoid this liquidation like the plague. A compulsory liquidation is initiated by a creditor they petition the court to wind up your business due to unpaid debts. The court appoints the official receiver as liquidator and the official receiver will liquidate the business, look at any wrongdoing and then sell any assets. It is more viewed a lot more serious than a voluntary process. And the reason why it's viewed a lot more serious is when you become insolvent, so you can't pay your debts when they fall due liabilities more than the assets so you've got legal action against you. Your responsibilities as a director, they change. You're no longer going to work to generate profits to distribute to shareholders and stakeholders. You now cannot make your creditors' positions any worse, okay? Now, if you are insolvent, you're getting... HMRC are the largest petitioner for winding up petitions, okay? They're, if you owe them a lot of money, that's they're going to eventually... They'll ring you, they'll text you, they'll write letters to you, they'll come out and visit you, and eventually they go, I've had enough of this clown, and I'm going to wind the business up. By the very nature that you've let your business get wound up, it sort of suggests that you've not followed your fiduciary duties, you've not acted responsibly, and it's likely that you may, it's more likely that you'll get disqualified as a director than the voluntary process. The official receiver is a public body, they will investigate your conduct, they will ask you to come in for an interview, they will review everything and they will make recommendations as they see fit from that point. In my experience you are more likely to be disqualified as a director if you get compulsory liquidated. And I just need to loop back to a creditor's voluntary liquidation. The insolvency practitioner will still investigate your conduct as a director. They're going to look at the reasons why the company's failed. And if they find any reasons um, where you've, uh, you know, any areas that you've acted inappropriately, selling assets for less than they're worth, transferring money to people at the death, um, you know, pref preferring certain creditors over the others, or the dreaded director's loan account where you owe the company money, an insolvency practitioner will take action against you. Okay. Now, the liquidation process, let's talk a little bit like that. So, a liquidator takes control of a company's affairs once it's become appointed. To find a liquidator, you will probably ask your accountant, you will probably search on Google, you may see a funny looking bold chap on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, LinkedIn or Facebook. 
But please, before you appoint a liquidator, do your own due diligence. Have a lot of conversations with them. Make sure you get a good feel for them. Don't jump into bed with the first one that you see, okay? But once you appoint them, they will take control. The business's operations will cease, all contracts will be terminated, and your employees will be made redundant. A liquidator, insolvency practitioner, or all IP, remember they're all the same things, they will try then to realise some funds for creditors. This could be by way of collecting money owed into the company, could be a way of selling assets in the business, or they may realise funds for creditors by taking action against the director of the, of the insolvent business. And again, it's overdrawn loan accounts, preference payments and misfeasance claims that they're going to come for you. An overdrawn loan account is where you've took too much money out of the company. It's an asset of the business and on liquidation, the liquidator is going to ask you to pay it back. You will be able to get some type of deal done with the liquidator in time to pay, but it's critically important that you do not sign liquidation papers until you've had that conversation. You can find out where your overdrawn loan account stands by looking at Xero, QuickBooks or Sage and pulling off a trial balance. That's if you use those softwares and you keep them up to date. You may ask your accountant to see where your director's loan account is. Um, if you've not got that, those, that bits of information on your last set of accounts, your director's loan account will be in there. It'll be in the assets section or it might be in the director's current account section or it might be in the debtors section, okay? But it, remember, the problem with checking your accounts is your accounts are always out of date. I'm just about to sign my accounts off for um, uh, up to January 2024. We're in June 2024. So if I have a director's loan account in January, which I don't, thankfully, you know, I'll have had six months of drawings after that, which could increase your director's loan account. Anyway, something to be aware of. If you want more information on overdrawn director's loan accounts, I have done lots of videos on the YouTube channel. Another thing where a, an insolvency practitioner may be able to recover um, additional fees from you is if you've made a preference payment. And what that means is, is towards the end of the company's life, you become insolvent and you've decided to pr prefer pay certain creditors over other creditors. Remember, when you become insolvent, you're meant to treat all creditors equally. And if you're paying off personal guarantees or your Auntie Doris, big lumps of money you're clearly doing that in preference of everyone else and that'll get into trouble with a liquidator and you will be asked to pay that back and there's so many reasons why a company could be liquidated obviously it's become insolvent the market's changed the customers have disappeared the directors have retired have got bored or they've moved on to things you know there's a million and one reasons why a business might liquidate. But what's important is before you liquidate is you're fully armed with the facts. So the key effects of liquidation, remember, a company is going to immediately cease trading. Your director's powers stop. Like you are no longer an officer of the court, your responsibility to the company's over. You might be asked questions from the insolvency practitioner after liquidation. Make sure you comply with a liquidator. That'll get you in trouble if you don't. A liquidator is going to sell off assets, if there are, to repay some creditors. Any debts that are remaining, that are unsecured, they get written off. An investigation is going to happen to you as a director. And eventually, could be 12 months, could be two years, depending on the complexity. Could be five years, could be 15 years, depending on the complexity of your liquidation. It will get dissolved from company's house. I hope you found the video useful. Thanks for your time, Chris Worden. Bye-bye.